Hi, I'm Steve Levy, President and CEO of Bell Laboratories. Since 1974, Bell has been producing the highest quality products for the pest control market. We supply not only the professional and agricultural markets, but also offer the most advanced rodent control products for a growing consumer market. We've taken the same technology and science that have made us an industry leader and applied it to rat eradication projects on islands around the world. The remote and fragile ecosystems you'll see in this video are home to precious plants and animals, particularly nesting bird populations, whose very existence is threatened by rats. We at Bell Labs are proud to be part of this endeavor, and we thank you for your support. As untouched and pristine as these remote islands appear, beneath their beauty lies a serious global problem that threatens many native species with extinction, rats. Rats arrived on these islands aboard ships of early explorers and for centuries have thrived, wreaking havoc on native plants and wildlife. But it's the seabirds in particular that are vulnerable Birds rely on these remote islands to breed and raise their young. Yet nesting birds are easy prey for rats that eat their eggs and young chicks. Today, 95% of all known bird extinctions occur on islands. Off the coast of Alaska is a remote island aptly named Rat Island. Invasive rats had decimated the seabird populations. When environmental biologists arrived in 2008, the island was eerily quiet. The absence of birds was palpable. Going to Rat Island, all you heard was the wind. It could only be described as eerily quiet, uh, absence of life. The only evidence that we saw on the island was, was the presence of rats, and it was the rats that were preying on, on the birds and likely pushed the, uh, the native seabirds to near extinction on that island. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service along with the Nature Conservancy and Island Conservation, implemented the most ambitious island habitat restoration project ever undertaken in the Northern Hemisphere. They turned to Bell Laboratories. We began working with Bell Labs over 12 years ago, uh, and one of the reasons we initiated working with Bell was because they listened. They listened to the goals and the needs for these projects that we needed a high quality bait product to maximize the probability of successfully removing these rats and mice from these islands, delivering a bait product to these sites on time in a form that we can use in these extreme environments. Bell scientists developed a rodent bait for aerial application on Rat Island. The specially designed bait pellets targeted rats with minimal risk to other wildlife. The recovery on, on islands can be, can be very quick, and we saw a recovery on, on Rat Island uh, beginning, initiating within, within a year of, of bait application onto Rat Island. Uh, we documented um, breeding uh, songbirds such as the song sparrow, the Aleutian race of the, uh, the giant song sparrow on that island began breeding. It was absent prior to the eradication, likely because of the presence of uh, predation pressure by introduced rats, and within a year there were young ones detected on the island. It takes two years with no evidence of rats before an island can be declared rat-free. In 2010, Rat Island was declared rat-free. Building on the success of Rat Island, Bell Laboratories now partners with global environmental leaders on rat eradication projects, protecting native species on islands around the world. Ridding islands of predatory rats is no easy task. Each island project is unique. Helicopters and equipment are often shipped thousands of miles by sea. Timing is critical, with bait drops occurring when birds are not nesting, and weather plays a factor. On South Georgia Island in the Antarctic, Bell Laboratories is working with the South Georgia Heritage Trust. Rats have completely changed the ecology of the island, removing almost 90% of the seabirds. I think uh, it's been a number of years in the development and, and one of the, the reasons for that, it is 10 times bigger than any rodent eradication project ever attempted worldwide. Not only that, but it's in the most um, extreme environment that's ever been attempted. Bell's aerial broadcast bait was not only suited to the island's wet environment, 
but held up through changing weather conditions on its four-month sea journey south. To my great relief and delight, the bait looked as good as it was the day it left uh, the factory here in Madison. So um, it, w it was in absolutely perfect condition and we spread it um, very successfully. There was very little debris. Um, the the uh, bait had been made to the right specification, shape, size, color, which we'd asked. It was very resistant to, to heavy rainfall um, and was, as far as we know, completely effective. Broadcasting bait requires specially trained pilots flying tight GPS grids to spread the bait where rats will find and eat it. It is critical that bait reaches every rat. Pilots had one month to disperse bait on some 50 square miles before winter weather made flying prohibitive. A project like this, um, the best analogy is a chain and um, that chain includes people like myself, the helicopter pilots, the helicopters, the shipping, the ordering and the bait. And if any one element of that, any one link in this chain is weak, then the whole chain breaks and we fail. So every element of it has to be excellent and the bait is excellent. A similar approach is underway to protect the diversity of life in the renowned Galapagos Archipelago where rats have endangered some 50 bird species, along with many native plants. Even the eggs and young of the giant Galapagos tortoises would fall prey to rats if man did not intervene. At the request of the Charles Darwin Foundation, Bell Laboratories formulated a bait to withstand aerial application on these arid islands, yet breaks down fairly quickly to protect native species. Rodent eradication projects um, are, require a fine balance. It's a balance between delivering the bait to every rat on the island, but not making it available to potential native species on the island, such as the native birds of prey that may prey on the, on the, the rats and mice that are poisoned by the product that, that we're using. In the Galapagos most recently, we uh, captured as many of the, the native birds of prey, held them in captivity prior to the, uh, prior to the broadcast, put the bait on the island, and after a period of time when it was safe to return them to the island, we released them back on to the island ecosystem. Bell's island rat eradication involvement continues to grow as research teams labor to remove rats from these important seabird breeding islands. Tens of millions of birds, representing many endangered species, will benefit when islands are once again rat-free. The reason that Bell got involved with these projects in the first place was, was several things. One was to try to develop a bait that could be used on a scale larger than any other project we had been involved with in the past. Uh, most of our work had been in structural pest control. We had never been involved with something as large as this type of thing. The long-term benefits, I think, are we have an opportunity by you getting involved with these dedicated scientists to preserve endangered and threatened species so that future generations, our children, our children's children, are going to be able to enjoy them, and more important, we are able to give something back to the planet that we would have not been able to be involved with in our normal day-to-day -day operations. And so what we're doing is, is just putting right what man put wrong in the first place. We're just rolling back the damage, and the idea is that in a few years, the island will be as pristine as it was when Captain Cook set foot on it in 1775.